All right. So I was working on the release notes and accidentally sent an email to you that uh, the new versions of Bluefin GTS are, are ready. Uh, but that's not true. That's coming out on uh, Tuesday. So if you got that, uh, enjoy the preview of the release notes there. I've got some good stuff in there. Uh, you can definitely check that out. Uh, today, I want to talk about Linux distributions because that's what people like to t talk about all the time. And um, one of the things that we say is uh, universal blue images tend to be distroless, right? Um, and a lot of people don't know what that means. And like, they think it's just another made up cloud native term. It is. Uh, but there the intent is, is that the priority um, in the equation of like the stack is uh, for the workload. So in our case, in case of Bluefin, um, I don't care about Bluefin. I want it to be transparent. I identify more as a person who loves GNOME and those apps than I do with my Linux distribution. That's because in the old model, the Linux distribution was where you got everything, right? Like it was the thing that delivered stuff to you every day. Now in 2025, especially with this next generation stuff, container files, we could source our stuff from anywhere. I could, we could slap in stuff from all over the place. So the, the idea that there's one monolithic distribution, I think is something that we're leaving in the past. Um, especially when universal blue images are actually three distributions. They are Fedora, Homebrew, and Flathub. Yes, Flathub is a distribution and so is Homebrew. So um, one of the reasons we say like Bluefin is a custom image is it's a combination of different distributions. Um, and we try to choose the best one for that given purpose. So uh, for GUI apps, that's gonna have to be Flathub because they have a plan for getting people paid. And the sandboxing model, all of that stuff, it's really great. And snaps also have to use the same free desktop portal. So that's what we chose. It's community driven. It's a natural fit for us. Um, so I care more about Flathub, advocating for Flathub more than I do for Universal Blue, right? And I think that's difficult for people to understand because we're so used to the distribution being the primary thing, right? Like when you went to a Linux news site, it was only about distributions. Those were the only news we had. And I want to see a world, and I know some people may not like this, but, you know, it's not working for us otherwise, is a world where the applications are important. And all I care about is my applications. Like, dude, I saw this one today, Pinta. Dude, this new Pinta app is GTK4. Dude, it's so awesome. Like, can you believe it? We have like native apps and stuff like that. I want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about Linux. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about Linux. Um, and it's all important, right? I'm not saying distributions aren't important. They are obviously our base image to make all the stuff. Um, so it is important. Um, but I think at the end of the day, as, as platform engineers, as like the plumbing people is, we take pride in, pride in being invisible, right? Like our job is to highlight these applications, right? One of the reasons, um, I'll show you here. One of the reasons I ship blur in, um, in Bluefin is, first of all, it looks awesome, right? But it highlights the work of the artist that made this artwork, right? Like, so to me, like our purpose is to make sure that whatever message we're trying to send, you know, whatever your use case is, is that's the message that we're trying to send, right? Like I want you to, to care about your browser. I don't want you, I even say this in the doc somewhere. I say, I want you to read the docs once and like never have to come here again. Um, so I hope this also helps answer some questions. Some people were asking, you know, um, hey, is there like a beginner's guide to Bluefin? Um, you know, why isn't there, you know, a tour or whatever? First of all, if I had the money, sure. I'd love to have little instructional videos and all that kind of stuff. But also Universal Blue and Bluefin, they're designed to be like the starter dungeon if you're playing a video game, right? Like I'm here to get you started on your road. You're going to take, you know, your CLI path your GUI path, your development path, or, you know, you might just be setting up a relative with it that you don't want them to bother you anymore. So this is like, these systems are great for that. Um, you know, and then I want you to like move on and that's not really like get out of here, uh, move on. Cause of course you're going to check in. This stuff's cool. You know, you have a little community, look at the dinosaurs, uh, you know, so all that stuff is, is well and good, 
But the sooner you get out of your mindset that you're using an, uh, a Linux distro, uh, the better, right? You're going to be using Podman. You're going to be using Docker. You're going to be using um, Firefox. You're going to be using Chrome, whatever, whatever thing you're into, you know, and those workloads and stuff will all be containerized away from Bluefin, which is what we want. And we designed it that way on purpose so that you can keep everything nice and clean. And it's always really, really nice when you get a new machine to have just the image the exact way you want. You know, you use whatever management tool you have to get all your other stuff on there or backups or whatever. Um, you know, and then that that kind of becomes the vibe. So I, I, uh, I hope that kind of clarifies a few things for you all. Uh, F42 is looking awesome. I know a lot of people ask, you know, when's it going to be ready? When's it going to be ready? Um, it's It's been ready for a while. You could rebase the 42 on any of our images right now. Um, we have that e either in the beta or you could just colon 42 if you want to be explicit about it. Um, everything's on track for Tuesday. Um, so GTS comes out first. That is when F40 moves to F41. Uh, in Bluefin GTS, that's our default kind of uh, stable stabler branch that follows Fedora minus one. And um, that's gonna become Fedora 41. And that was a banger, man. Like as a GNOME person, GNOME was perfect. Like it was a really good cycle other than I think we had to pin a few kernels for the AMD folks kind of had to write out that GPU wave. Um, but it happens and you know, the team, uh, we were able to manage that uh, for you. So if you're on an AMD system, we got to save you from a few regressions and that feels good. Uh, 42 is looking great as well. Um, that's automated when that comes out. So whenever the core OS folks um, flip, that is, that's the kind of versioning that we follow. And then our builds will just automatically pick it up and you should have that usually about two to three weeks after is when they, they flipped that switch and that's looking really good. The, um, the triple buffering patch in that GNOME is, is really nice for performing. Like you can feel, it definitely feels liquidy um, compared especially to the backported patches that we had uh, in the past. So that's that's feeling pretty good and Aurora and Bazite are on track as well. So um, things are going pretty good. And uh, man, I'm really, I'm still tired from KubeCon. That's how, <laughs> how busy I've been. So uh, stay safe out there folks and we'll see you around.